after driving V8s for a long time, I just couldn't handle the sound of the, the four-cylinder. just didn't quite do it for me. It still sounded sporty, but it just didn't sound right to me. Um, so, and, you know, for many years, the Ferrari's been really on the top of the list. I'm Shane Morris and this is my 2017 Ferrari 488 Spider. How I got interested in cars was uh, my father and my uncle were farmers out on the Darling Downs and they they were right into cars themselves, especially especially in the uh, late 60s, early 1970s when they were a bit younger and uh, liked to spend their money <laughs> on, uh, on vehicles. So I grew up around them, my father buying, he liked, he liked Mustangs and he liked um, Fairlanes, the Hot Falcons, that sort of thing. My uncle was a bit more into the Mustangs and he started uh, started collecting Mustangs from when I was fairly young. He was particularly keen on 1969 Mustangs. He had a, a Mac 1 that I remember. So a lot of my youth I remember talking about cars, going with Dad to buy cars, um, especially V8s, so, you know, mad Ford cranks. So. You know, they love to follow Dick Johnson, races like that. Um, so where we're sitting here today is actually the old Surface Paradise International Raceway. And I can remember coming here many times uh, to watch uh, the touring cars, particularly Dick Johnson. I can remember just over the back here about where these buildings are. Uh, one day that he crashed in the old blue, true blue Falcon. And we went for a walk afterwards and I picked up a piece of the fiberglass off the car and took that home. I think it's still at home somewhere, actually. And uh, I can remember uh, they used to run sometimes the Australian Formula One Grand Prix here. And I think it was, this must have been about maybe 1977, 1978, coming here and seeing that. And seeing, uh, I believe it was a McLaren that actually won on the day, but it would have been the time of Lola's and Elfins and, and all those sort of cars. My uncle actually had a tea bucket that he built himself and he also had a Mac 1 Mustang that he used to drag race here because there was a drag strip here which was, I think we're probably pretty close to where the main straight used to be here as well. So, so that's kind of how I got hooked on cars. Um, you know, even at, at uh, Bathurst time of year, uh, there'd always or often be a party at our house and everyone, you know, Dad's friends would come over and they'd all argue about Ford versus Holden and all that sort of thing. But for some reason, you know, I was always more drawn, you know, I was interested in that, but I was always more drawn to, you know, the more exotic cars. Just recently I caught up with an old school friend down here and uh, we were talking about the old Top, top Trumps cards that came out and if you remember those, they had um, planes, boats, uh, helicopters, cars, trucks, all sorts of series and there was a, a photo of the car on the front and on the back it had all the different stats, you know, engine capacity, zero to a hundred time, all that sort of thing and then you would kind of so you'd shuffle the cards and deal them out and everyone would look at the picture on the front and you'd, and you'd have to pick the best, you know, the best um, feature of the car and see if you could beat everyone else. 
with that. So I remember on that, um, I had a Cars one and I had a, a, there was a Lamborghini Countach in it. We were all like, you know, in absolute awe of the you know, Lamborghini Countach. <laughs> Uh, that kind of thing. So I actually tried to get my brothers to see if they could find them because they still live out there and uh, no, they couldn't find them. <laughs> Just reason to believe it. I particularly remember that. And there, were for, there were Ferraris and I think it was Porsche 911 in that pack. Uh, I think they still make them too. So yeah, so that was, uh, that was a, a lot of our life out there. It was uh, apart, from, apart from the farm sport there wasn't really a lot of other things to do so you know, following cars and being interested in cars was a big, a big part of a big part of our life. that I've owned. I believe the uh, first car that I ever bought was a Laser, Ford Laser TX3. I think it was the K, KE model, which was would have been 1987. It was the white one that had the double round headlights. Uh, so that was the first car I spent my own money on. Before that, I think Dad helped me out <laughs> with, uh, with vehicles before that. And then I uh, you know, had a couple of similar type of cars when I was younger and then you know you get married and you have family and then you go through your boring car phase or some of this too and then when I um, you know as, as things started to go better business wise over the years and you build up your savings and started to get some more interesting cars probably most recently uh, I had a uh, the uh, C63 the W204 the 6.2 litre V8 um, that was an amazing engine in that car and it, it sounded like it was a really angry car when you when you put the accelerator down and I, I think I went through a set of tyres about every seven or eight months in that car it just had it was it was very loud very fast but it's also burned tyres very quickly so uh, but fantastic car of, of uh, cars that of cars that I'd uh, should have kept over the years. That's probably the one that I think. Oh, maybe I should have kept that. You know, sort of, I've always been, I've always been more interested in new cars. I really like looking at old cars, you know, the classics and even, you know, real old vintage cars. But I've never really been that keen on collecting them and putting them in the shed. I'd like to have something, you know, that I can drive every day or at least drive frequently. Um, so yeah, um, also had the the C63S that came out after. Um, the 6.2 litre, so that was a twin turbo four. Uh, it was a little bit, a little bit quicker, or a fair bit quicker. I think it was zero to 100 in about four seconds, or maybe 4.1 seconds. And uh, it was, it was very, it was a much, much better car, but and it sounded great. But it sounded very different, of course, with a different type of engine, much deeper sort of sound, and 
much much more refined. Um, so, and then more recently, uh, had the uh, Porsche 718 Cayman GTS. That was an absolutely brilliant car to drive. It was amazing. Uh, four cylinder, oh sorry, yeah, four cylinder, uh, two and a half litre turbo. It was it was probably the best car that I've ever owned up to that point. But um, after driving V8s for a long time, I just couldn't handle the sound of the the four cylinder. Just didn't quite do it for me. It still sounded sporty, but it just didn't sound right to me. Um, so and you know, for many years, the Ferrari's been really on the top of the list of. Uh, Cars, cars that I'd like to buy, and uh, I was looking on the uh, my website one one day and uh, saw this one come up, and I had seen it at other times, and I thought, well, okay, now's the time. Now's the time. It had the right colours. I liked the wheels that were a bit different. Had the right options on it that I was interested in. So uh, finally bit the bullet and uh, bought the Ferrari 488. And, uh, it's been absolutely fantastic uh, to, to own. So I've never done never done racing, but I have done quite a few uh, track days and, and different kinds of days with, with manufacturers. Uh, probably fairly fairly early, uh, when I, especially when I had this the uh, 6.2 litre C63. I did a few track days with uh, Terry Bow, who's uh, John Bow's brother. You might remember from motor racing uh, from the, the old touring cars. He he was a great, great guy, and he had a, another group of, of uh, race drivers that would uh, do instruction with you. So I did, did some of those days at, at uh, Queensland Raceway. They were very, very fun days out. Very small number of people on the track, and you could really get out and, and have a go, but not be worried about running into someone else. Some of the more, more amazing experiences I've done on those kind of days. I've done some of with Porsche at the driver centre at Mount Cotton in Brisbane. That's a really fun day. Yeah, so the Porsche day is really great because um, you, apart from being on the track, they get you on the skid pan and Motocarna type circuit, and it all mixed up sort of the day. Uh, one, of, one of the best things that um, Mercedes used to run, uh, certainly have in the last couple of years, because it hasn't been a Formula One in Australia, but uh, a few years ago, uh, I went a few times actually, and uh, AMG were doing a uh, track day on the Melbourne Formula One circuit on the Wednesday before the race. So once, once the track was under FIA control, then uh, get out and do hot laps, uh, drive yourself it was on the, uh, the F1 track, so that was, that was pretty cool. And then probably uh, the most probably different kind of experience I've had of that type is uh, at the Las Vegas Speedway, uh, driving open wheeler, uh, much like an Indy car type of style. Ah, we're very close to that, and you know, that, that's that's very different kind of drive, turning left all the time. And uh, and when when you're on that track, you know the first time they kind of talk you through it a bit over, over the uh, over uh, radio kind of setup, and um, 
yeah, when when they kind of wind, get you to wind up slowly, but then eventually you hit a speed where they where you're coming up to the corner and they're saying, don't lift off the pedal, you know. So that first time you go flat out into a corner, that was really interesting experience. But uh, my best my best lap on that trip, I averaged 163 miles per hour for the lap. Certainly you get a lot of attention in this kind of car, uh, which I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that's normally very comfortable with that. Um, but people really get excited about the car and it's always positive type attention. So, uh, you know, quite often when you park in a shopping area or public sort of area, people come up and just randomly start talking to you about their cars or asking you questions about the car. But uh, the, the thing I find most interesting is people try to talk to you while you're driving along. If you've got the top down like we have now, uh, you get people, even when we came down, I picked up my daughter from the airport in Brisbane uh, on Thursday night to drive down and it, the traffic was quite heavy and you know there were people talking to us in the slow traffic on the way down. You know. <laughs> truck behind tooting, you know, give him the thumbs up and <laughs> so, you know, um, people come up and start telling you things about what they're doing to their own cars, how they're customising, yeah, so it does generate a lot of, a lot of conversation. 